Hey everybody, Ryan and Melody of the Whole Card here. Welcome to the table and welcome to a special con in review edition of the Whole Card. This is going to be our first of hopefully many videos in the future reviewing a convention that we just recently went to. And today we are reviewing PAX Unplugged 2018, which we were at last weekend. We went last year to PAX Unplugged, the inaugural PAX Unplugged, uh, which is in Philadelphia. And boy howdy, this year was <laughs> much, much bigger. So what is PAX Unplugged? So PAX Unplugged <laughs> is another big uh, board game convention. Um, and like I said, it's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at the Pennsylvania Convention Center uh, around the end of November, beginning of December. And it used to be our home con. But since we moved, it's no longer. Uh, but we still. That's okay. Now we live near Dragon Con. Right. Now we're not going to that one. <laughs> no. That's not um, happening. So, uh, what can you expect to see at PAX Unplugged? Well, there's a huge exhibitor hall, a giant free play room uh, with a gaming library, a first look room with some of the new games that came out at Essen or things that were just released beforehand, some new Kickstarters that had just come out, um, tons of panels and shows and tournaments tournaments uh, they have specialty rooms like the um the unpub room where they have indie authors who bring their games for people at the convention to play test and give feedback directly to the designers and publishers um and i think one of my favorites that i did not get to spend as much time in this year as, as i really wanted to is the classic cardboard room where they have legit old school games like Checkers and Scrabble and Candyland and Mall Madness, which they didn't have this year, but we did see Mall Madness last year. They also have workshops. Yes, um, workshops. Which I wanted to see, but I think we, we spend our time well, but they also have workshops. Workshops um, for uh, creating your own terrain for RPGs or painting miniatures. They have shows like Acquisitions Incorporated, the Dice, Dice Tower, camera, yeah, Dice Tower, Dice Camera Action. Shut up and sit down. Yep. So they have a ton of people who are, I guess, well known in the industry who are also doing podcasts and and top tens and shows. Yep, yep, yep. Like RPG shows, what I mean. RPG shows <laughs> and a bunch of people like us, Twist Twitch streamers that uh, we got to hang out with and game with. Thanks, Twist Gaming, for having us on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, check out their their December second video. We're about like forty five minutes in. Just quick little plug. Um, so, what was your general impression of this year's Pax Unplugged? I thought it was great. Wow. I'm articulate. <laughs> Thanks for your input. <laughs> um, no, I thought they did a lot of things really well in comparison to last year. Mm -hmm. um, they had more space, and that was probably the most important thing for them to change from last year. They had more space for gaming, more space for walking around and seeing exhibitors. Um, there was just space to exist, and you didn't feel crammed in. Because there aren't a lot of people in comparison to other conventions, but there are still enough that there are a lot of bodies in the, Philadelphia, in the, in the Pennsylvania Convention Center. Um, but they did a really good job of handling it and managing it. Right. Particularly in the first look area. That um, whole hall. Yeah, the, the entirety of it. Yeah. Everything was better. But this year we actually got to sit down and be at the first look area because there was room for people. Right. And a large part of that is because last year they had um, all the exhibitors and the free play area and the theater and the uh, tournament area in one space. And this year they took that Gosh. space and made two-thirds of it be the exhibitors um, and the rest of it was either free play or the first look area. And there really isn't much difference between the free play and the first look area, except if you go into the first look area and sit down, they have games already set up for you to play, and PAX Enforcer is willing to teach you and streamline the learning process for you to get a, a game in. And it's a full game, not even just a, a demo. Yeah, and they denote it, they denoted it very, very specifically with those purple tablecloths yes. too so you have the free play area which is enormous but it was just the open tables and then you had the first play area which was blocked off with some partitions and also had the purple yeah. covering and it may have been like a little bit difficult for you to find a table but there were places to sit yes <laughs> almost which certainly to do. which we did get to do uh, your impressions <laughs> so i thought i thought it was great i thought it was amazing that they made an entire 
floor, like an entire hall dedicated to tournament play because there was a whole bunch of tournaments. And that was one of my big problems last year was they took, they had maybe like, it seemed like only like 10 or 15 rows of tables for free play. And then the rest of those tables was just tournaments. Was just tournaments. <sighs> this year they made an entire hall out of tournaments. Um, there was Key Forge and Clank and, and, Ticket to Ride. And ticket to Ride and, and Pandemic Survival, which yeah. Empress Jen won. Yay, Jen! Congratulations. Um, uh, and they had paid and unpaid tournaments. And unpaid so if you are interested yes. in that, they you can do either one. Um, yeah, but it was the whole space below below the expo the hall. expo hall, yeah. which shared uh, that whole that floor down there was shared with. Uh, also, some free play area for RPGs. Mm-hmm. If you just wanted to grab your dice and grab some folk, and you could just sit there and play some RPGs and stuff. Yeah, it was awesome. And of course, they had an entire RPG area like they did last year, except bigger. Again, much, much bigger. Because last year, the bigger com- uh, another complaint was that the RPG area was too small, and they had an entire hallway. Yeah. For <laughs> yeah. for for RPG it sessions. It was fantastic. And this year, they just expanded it through many, many rooms. Um, and had an RPG free play session, which I don't think they had last year. I don't remember. I don't remember it. I know I they it was had... just so overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know they had Adventurers League and yeah. uh, some other like demo RPG session type things. But they had a whole RPG free play room this year. So I thought that was cool. Just the fact that it was much, much bigger was awesome. I think that's that's the overall impression from, from both of us. Yes. Yeah. More space meant... Better convention. <laughs> yes. So we had a lot of experiences at PAX Unplugged this year. Mel, what was your favorite? My favorite? Um, I think my favorite, it's, uh, tell me if it's, if it's cop-out answer, but the fact that we got to do, we did everything we said we were going to do. We made a very specific list of what we were going to do at PAX. It was play new games, and play some old games we wanted to play. <laughs> and we did, and it was great. Because um, not only did we get to play new games with, you know, new games that we had never seen or had seen and had never got a chance to get our hands on, um, we got to play with people we had also never met in person. So right. uh, we hung out with uh, Crit Camp, here on Twitch, we got to play with Twist Gaming, Tilted Tabletop, um, Timed Tabletop, and some of the folks that we ran into. Um, and meeting them in person was just really cool. And part of what made it part of what made it a really great experience was that they reminded me how cool the people in this hobby can be. Just so welcoming and so inviting and so willing to sit and play a game with you, uh, to teach you something new, to let you watch for a while and then have you jump in. Um, and it just doesn't matter what your you know what your background is, where you came from, and why you're doing it. It's just someone is here to welcome you, and it's, that's all I really wanted. It's like we have something in common, <laughs> and it's board games, so we can. <laughs> Put any differences that we may or may not have aside, and just play. <laughs> play a game. Let's just play yeah. a game. So yeah. that was that was really cool. All the all the different people we got to meet, getting to do what we said we wanted to do, and feeling very comfortable to just sit down and play games. We didn't go to panels. We didn't go to panels. We didn't do the tourneys. Um, but we knew they were there, and we could go. It's just not what we wanted to do. If you want to do that, they are there for you. There's a ton of them. But we wanted to play games. We wanted to meet some new folks. And that's what we got to do. Yeah, I was there to game and to buy games, potentially. Um, which... Just pass it right along. Ah, it's the hall! Just wanted you to experience that. I bought them. <laughs> you enjoy that. <laughs> um, but, but seriously, I wanted to play... Uh, I really just wanted to play a bunch of new games, and I was more than happy to play some older games that I like. We played Stone Age, we played Lords of Waterdeep. Got my butt kicked. Uh, yes, um, both times. And we we taught people games. We taught Dinosaur Island to uh, Randy and Ellen, uh, who are on who are contributors for Board Game Breakfast on the Dice Tower. Hi guys, uh, <laughs> and they were so awesome and so cool to meet in person. Um, and then, like you said, we played games with Crit Camp and um, 
and Twist Gaming and other people. And, like, we had friends that were there that we also gamed with and met new friends along the way. Um, so, really, that was the, the, the big thing for me. Like, yes. I don't think that's a cop-out answer. Yay! <laughs> but also, like, getting to play new games, uh, getting to try new games before you buy them, or even just getting a first impression of a game from a from an exhibitor and uh, getting to demo it, see the pieces, and see it in action, and see people having fun and being like, I want that. Yep. Like, that happened with Pictomania. Uh, we played that in the Twist Gaming Room. and I was then... not expecting to like that game so much. I wasn't either, because I don't like Pictionary. And I don't really like party games, but, like, it, making it a real-time thing was really cool. But anyway. So, overall, PAX Unplugged 2018, huge success, huge improvement over last year. Uh, the only downside, I guess, personally for us was that we didn't get to play Treasure Island, which was in the first look, sec first look section. Oh, my God, but, we were dogging that game. Yeah, just we like, really were. Is but it free? It was just like oh, they were, they, is they it were, free? They had two copies no, of it, free. and it was, like, always, <laughs> always had people... In on that, but I we did get to can... try. We did get to try uh, holding on the life of Billy Kerr. Yes. Or the troubled life of Billy. The Kerr. The troubled life of Billy Kerr. Um, we got to try Architects of the West Kingdom. Um, we saw on tour uh, in oh, action, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we backed, so we can wait until we get that. Um, but a whole bunch of other games. Western Legends was in the first look section. I was like, I'd like to play that, but <laughs> we already I, have. I it. already have you. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, I wonder if there's something we could do about. Uh, if they could judge more popular games, possibly, and have them re more readily available, mm -hmm. or if they just want to just make sure they have a little bit of everything, and so it's just kind of be, it's going to be just pay attention, hop on it when it's free. Yeah, and I was surprised that uh, that something like Welcome Two wasn't in that first look section, or Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Did that wasn't there either, and that, those two games, those two games particularly, probably should have been there, but I guess they just couldn't get their hands on. A copy of it for for demo purposes um, oh, well. but we, we did get to play welcome to in twist gaming room so i was happy about that yes we did we got to play a couple of new games uh we even got to because of that whole you know finding people we'd never met before uh we got to play a game that was still being prototyped uh, we got to play a game a word game called medium uh, which was a fun little party game that has some really fun nuance to it so we got to play a couple of brand new games not even in the first look section so pretty much if there's something you want to do at PAX it's there um whether it is new games whether it is meeting some people who I suppose have some type of celebrity status I guess in well, the industry well it's a bunch of designers um, and and you know uh but then there's the people like you know the people who are part of content creators. That's what I was like. Content, content creators. Yes, that that covers much more because yeah. uh, that you know that can include the people who are on you know YouTube, people who are on right. Twitch, people who are doing the tabletop RPGs. There were a lot of people that um, that are part of tabletop RPGs that viewers wanted autographs and things like that. Those are there as well. Workshops are available. Uh, all manner of things. It's anything that's part of, I guess, analog gaming is there at PAX. So definitely one that we have our eyes on to go to every year, even if it's not nearly as convenient to get there since we live 800 miles away now. <laughs> but that's okay. That's it was fantastic that first year driving, though. Yes. The added bonus but... is we got to see our family afterwards, so that was all good. Yeah. Oh, that was a ton of fun. We, we basically just had a, a week-long vacation. Yep. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to going back next year just because it was a ton of fun going to see old friends and making new ones along the way and playing new games that had just come out at Essen. Great, inspiring, wonderful time. Uh, so that is going to do it for us. Hope you liked the review. Leave a comment below. Give us a follow and especially give us a follow on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the whole card. We are restarting our stream. What? Uh... I feel like there's something else special about restarting stream there's something something else going on something uh something pretty important can't think of it but um it might come to mind when we restart we're restarting this sunday december 9th 2018 for our board game brunch it is stop it it is uh we are restarting uh and i don't know what we're playing but you should join us there, and it'll be a surprise, and it'll be a blast. So uh, give us a follow at twitch.tv slash the whole card. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube, because why not? 
because we're going to do all the things, and uh, it would be great to have you along for the ride. So... We saved a seat for you at the table. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, until then, that's Melody. I'm Ryan. We're the co-founders of The Whole Card. And thanks for watching. You guys are awesome.